That's it. It feels right in the house of the Lord. God, you inhabit the praises of your people. Lord, you live within the praises of your people. So, God, we unravel the praise right now, Jesus. Oh, God, visit with us tonight. In Jesus' name, we give you praise. We give you glory. In that same fort of adoration and thanksgiving, let's really clap our hands unto Jesus. I mean, let's give him a shrug. There may be a few of us in this place right now. There's more coming. But all it takes is just a few to lift up the name of Jesus, to attract the presence of Almighty God, to say, Lord, here we are, and we welcome your presence. We welcome your spirit. My agenda is you. My focus is you. My desire is you. Could you lift up your voice now? Just lift up your voice now and begin to make utterings and groanings and moanings. Could you just lift up your voice in adoration and tell how much you appreciate the King of all kings, the Lord of all lords. He is in the house. Hallelujah. 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 We worship you, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. We welcome you to our Wednesday night midweek manna. We want you to receive of the presence of God and receive of the word of God. While we start with praise and worship and thanksgiving and song, we want you to open up your heart. And as you begin to lift up the name of Jesus, the Bible says that he draws all men nigh unto him when we lift him up. So as you lift up Jesus, uh, I pray that you would open up your heart and your mind to receive what the Lord wants to deposit into your life tonight. In the book of Isaiah chapter 40, very common portion of scripture, Isaiah chapter 40, starting at verse 28, the prophet asks a question. He says, hast thou not known? Have you not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. But he giveth power to the faint. And to them that have no might, he increases their strength. Even the youth, they'll be weary. The young men, they shall fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and shall not faint. Does anybody need some strength today? Does anybody need some encouragement today? I encourage you just to wait upon the Lord and worship Him in praise and in song this evening. How many of you come to worship the King of glory in this place? Oh, come on, let's put our hands together. Oh, I feel the joy of the Lord. I feel the joy of the Lord falling fresh on me. I feel the joy of the Lord delivering me. I feel the joy of the Holy Ghost all over me. the joy of the Lord falling fresh on me. I feel the joy of the Lord delivering me. I feel the joy of the Holy Ghost all over me. I feel the joy.
I received a word at camp meeting that said that I would be consumed by the fire of the Holy Ghost. Well, I believe that that same fire is the joy of the Lord to consume us tonight and get us ready for what He has in store this night, this evening, through His Word. Hallelujah, Jesus. You are the most beautiful name I know. You are the most precious feeling I know. You have the power of 
Amen. If you would turn someone next to you and just greet them in the name of Jesus, tell them how good and how glad you are, or how glad you are to see them here at Midweek Manna. Amen. As you make your way back to your seats, it's so good to have everyone here in the house of the Lord for Midweek Man. You may be seated in Jesus' name. Uh, I know it's a little warm, but we're still here to praise and to lift up the name of Jesus. Amen. To give God honor and glory. I uh, also want to make mention that this coming weekend, this weekend is our 25th year celebration service. And we want everyone to be here. We want everyone to come out. Amen. To our celebration and pastoral transition service. It's going to be a powerful time in the Lord. We have many friends, neighboring friends from neighboring churches, ministry that is coming. Amen. Our, uh, some of our district officials and, and leaders, elders of the church like Brother Romero and Bishop Hodges will be here to celebrate with us and to continue to charge us to move forward in the name of Jesus for the next 25 years. Praise God. Amen. So uh, there will be child care. There will be child care available Saturday and Sunday. Amen. Uh, brother and Sister Barry will be our evangelist for that time. And so we want you to take advantage of that. Invite people to come. Amen. Invite old, maybe some old church members that haven't been in a while. Uh, some new individuals that have been visiting here and there. Tell them to come. Amen. And we want them to be blessed in the name of Jesus. I am expecting for us to have a great, tremendous blowout service uh, where the power and the liberty of the Holy Ghost moves in such a beautiful way that it will be memorial. Amen. And so we want to thank the Lord for that. also want to make, and I'm sorry, both those services will start at 4 o'clock. That Saturday and Sunday will both start at 4 p.m. Amen. also want to make mention that we have our Explorers for Jesus Bible Camp coming up soon. Awesome. Hallelujah. Amen. There are flyers just like these and just like these, <laughs> just like this in the back. Uh, we want you to take some. There's plenty out there. The ushers have some. Amen. Uh, wave them, Brother George, real quick. Wave them, Brother George has some in his hand. If you would like some real quick, amen, raise your hand if you would like some of these, these flyers so you can hand out and pass out. Amen. Every family should be taking a few so that we can hand out to family members, friends, co-workers. This is going to be a great time. It's a Saturday and Sunday event, Explorers for Jesus. It's going to be a great time of food, fellowship, games, a whole, a whole mess of fun. But we introduce children to the power and the gift of the Holy Ghost. And that's what we want to do. We want to introduce them to a relationship with Jesus Christ. So I encourage you to take a few of those, 5, 10, 15 of them, and pass them out to friends and family. Maybe you want to leave them at a local laundromat or, or maybe a business that they put up postcards and such. Please, please do so, and let's be a witness for Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen, amen, amen. If you are watching online, we want to thank you for tuning in. Uh, to our Facebook or to our YouTube stream, we want to remind you that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. That means he knows no boundaries, no restrictions, and you can feel the presence of God right there where you're at, just like we are feeling it here. We invite you to engage with us. Get your Bible out, get a notepad out, and get ready to receive of the word of the Lord. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's stand to our feet once again, and let's get ready to receive our offering as we enter into praise and worship I would that you would repeat after me and let's declare this into the atmosphere tonight. As I give in tonight's offering, as I, give in tonight's offering I give with thanks to the God of my salvation. 
He has shown me unmerited mercy. He gave me a new heart and a new life. With a new destiny. Thank you, Lord, for all of your gracious provision. You are truly wonderful in all that you do. Tonight, I bring you my offering that you would use it for your kingdom. Amen. In Psalms chapter 106, verse number 1, David writes here, Praise ye the Lord. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endureth forever. Let's give with a cheerful heart tonight, and let's do it in a form of worship and praise unto the King. Amen. Because God loves a cheerful, a cheerful, cheerful giver. giver. but you have blessed us with your presence and with your spirit and we give back to you lord back to your kingdom that you would multiply it for your namesake and i pray that you bless each and every one of these givers here tonight press down shaking together running over your word says it we believe it and we claim it over our lives and we are careful to give you the praise the honor and the glory lord in the powerful name of jesus christ we pray amen let's continue to worship Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is.
Hallelujah. Amen. Let's, let's clap our hands to the Lord. Let's give him some praise. Thank you, God. We worship you. Hallelujah. God, we praise you. We love you, God. Thank you, God, in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. I'm sure you've all been informed that this weekend is a big weekend for us. And I just want to reiterate something is the parking, amen. If We want to have all of our members park on their second level so our guests can park on the top level and they don't have to walk up. Amen. So please uh, accept those who are handicapped and, uh, and uh, families who have strollers, okay? Amen. So in Jesus' name, everyone said amen. 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 Praise God. So uh, in Jesus' name. Uh, and if we need, if you come late, uh, we can't save a parking for you. So be here early. Be here early in Jesus' name. All right. Uh, we have been speaking on a theme here. called Dominion Faith. Remember that? This is only the fifth week we'll be speaking on it. And, and um, my, my whole purpose is to get us to a faith that unleashes dominion into our lives and if we can if we can get our minds to believe I'm not asking you to believe anything else that's not the, not in the word of God if you get our minds to believe God's word and then I know we will all we will all say right now oh, I believe it and I have I differ with you because if we did, we would see more signs, miracles, and wonders in our own personal lives. Okay? And uh, some of us would not be struggling like we do. I am not trying to condemn anybody. and that's, That is not my purpose. My whole purpose is for you to be blessed, for you to be blessed, amen, and be children of God that walk in the provisions that the, that the Lord has given us. And so if we can have that kind of faith, uh, we will surely demonstrate the attributes of our Father. Somebody said amen. Amen. So if you have your Bibles, please turn them to the book of Psalms. The book of Psalms, chapter number 22. Psalm 20. I'm sorry, Psalm 92. Psalm 92. Hallelujah. Dominion faith. That is the whole purpose as to why God made man. So that we can have dominion on the earth. Adam messed up, so he gave it to, to Noah. Told him the same thing. He told uh, uh, um, Adam, he said, Noah, be fruitful, multiply, and replenish the earth when Noah landed back on the ground after the flood. And then he reiterated it to the patriarchs after him, Jacob, Isaac, and, and Israel. And of course, when Jesus came on the scene, 
He removed the curse. He removed the sin. He removed Adam's Adam's curse on man. And and now the second Adam has given us a divine charge and that is be fruitful multiply and replenish the earth amen and so this is why we must step into dominion faith and, and the scripture tells us that that we are heirs of of abraham and and his seed and so that makes us sons and daughters of Jesus Christ, sons and daughters of God. And that puts us from the back of the bus all the way to the front of the bus. Praise God. Would you clap your hands to the Lord and give him praise? Amen. In Psalms 92, we're going to begin reading with verse number 12. Uh, the righteous shall flourish like the palm tree. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Those that be planted in the house of the Lord, who are them? Those are us. Those that be planted. I'm not here just because it's a pastime. Not here because this is a good hobby of mine. I'm not here because I don't have anything else to do. I'm not here because I just want to make someone else happy. No, I'm here because I'm planted. I'm planted in God's house. Amen. So this promise is mine. Those that be planted in the house of the Lord might flourish in the courts of our God. No, don't say that. It says shall. Shall. That means it's going to happen. Without a doubt, this is your promise. Without a doubt, it will happen. Amen. The key is to be planted in the house of God. Oh, I got quiet in here. I, I, I said the key is to be planted in the house of God. Amen. It's, it, it's not a... Well, I, I'll go if I want. If I got, if I'm tired, I, I'm just gonna stay home and sleep, you know. Or uh, I got something else to do. <laughs> Aunt Jamie flew into town from from uh, some remote island, and uh, you know we're not gonna come to church because you know I want to visit with her. What? Well, I, I don't know. My Bible doesn't say, seek ye first your relatives. Doesn't say that, huh, Frankie? Doesn't say, seek ye first Uncle Judd, Tijuana. Doesn't say that. It says, seek first the kingdom of God. And see, that scripture separates the planted from the uprooted. Those that are serious. If you really love uncle, aunt, grandma, grandpa, whoever, come with me. And let us see and enjoy him together. Because that person's going to go to hell if they don't have this. Hello. Woo, my God, I'm preaching already. Amen. But they shall flourish in the courts of God. Flourish. They shall bring forth fruit in old age and shall be fat and flourish 
Hallelujah. Amen. I got scripture for that. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your word, and we ask, God, that you would help us, lead us, and guide us by your spirit, God, and I pray that you would help me, Father, to minister to your people, that I would be able to give them your word, God. Help them, Father, to understand, help them, Lord, to see, Father, how you see, and to have faith like you want us to have faith, Lord, to walk in that dominion, Lord, as you would have us to walk in dominion. Father, by the power that's in the name of Jesus, we give you all the praise, all of the glory. And everyone said, in Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Amen. Uh, Dominion Faith number five, subtitle is, Bring Forth Fruit. Bring forth fruit. Because that's what the scripture is all about. The righteous shall flourish like a palm tree, and they shall grow like cedar in Lebanon. Uh, those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. Amen. Amen. And, and, and this is all talking about if you're going to flourish, and it used that word flourish in verse number one, and then flourish in verse number, two, uh, I'm sorry, in verse number 12, and flourish in verse number 13, and then it changes it up to describe what flourish is all about. They shall bring forth fruit. Amen. And this, what, it, this is what the Lord wants us to do. He, he wants us to bring forth fruit. He wants us to produce. He wants us to grow. He wants us to become what uh, his plan is. And, and let me explain something very, very simply, but it might get confusing to you. Okay. All right. We know that the Lord is the beginning and the ending, right? Amen. He is the Alpha and Omega, right? So he knows the ending from the beginning, right? He knows the ending from the beginning. And uh, if he wants to, and which he has done already, he, he goes from the end and comes to where we are at. Or went all the way to the beginning and he created. But he already knew what's going to be happening at the end. So he already had it all planned out from the beginning, from the end. But he, so from, from where he is standing at the end, he goes all the way to the beginning. He says, now let's start this thing. And then we go with Genesis 1-1. All right? But he, he went there from the end. He knew what he was going to do at the beginning. So he goes all the way over there to the beginning from the end and begins. I said all that. To get you to understand that don't think that when you surrender completely yourself to God, that, okay, he's going to think of a plan for you at that point. He already had a plan for, me, for you from the end. And he comes to where we are at, and he tries to help us to formulate that plan, to put that plan into action. And so we say, well, I'm just waiting on God. God God's not, we're not waiting on God. He's waiting on us to, to, to align ourselves with his plan so that he could put his plan into action in our lives. He already knows what he wants you to be, amen, before you were even born. Isn't that what the scripture says? He knew us when we were in our mother's womb and even prior to that. Amen. And so when, if we are 
trying to live for God and trying to figure out, well, I want to do this in God. And God says, that's not what I have a plan for you. That's not my plan for you. That's not what I've designed you to become. And so we stumble through our Christian walk, many do, because they're trying to be something that is not designed for them to be. Okay? A pencil can never become a pen. It wasn't made to be that. A dog cannot be a cat. Just like a male can be a female. (laughs) Apples can be oranges and oranges can be watermelons. It wasn't made to be that. Amen. And so, well, let's chop it all up, let's dissect it, and let's get this seed and come on, let's start all over again. Well, guess what? It's just going to come up an orange again. So, I don't know if you're getting what I'm saying. Amen. This is the, where, where, what takes you completely to, to surrender to God and let God take your life, not you take your life. Okay, I'm a, you know, I got the Holy Ghost, I'm baptized in Jesus' name, whatever, and, 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 and now God, you know, I want to be this and I want to be that, and God says, I, I didn't make you for that. We got to do like what Jesus did. Nevertheless, thine will be done, not my will. Right? He crucified the flesh. He crucified the flesh. Amen. Because the flesh didn't want to go through the crucifixion. He says, take this cup from me. You know, the flesh was crying out. Okay, the flesh, but his spirit. And say, see, a lot of us think that the person that we see in the mirror, that's us. That's, that's, that's your ugly self, but it's it, 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 in the outer scab of yourself, but, the, but who you are is inside. Okay. And what you show others is probably not you. Okay, but what, who you are is, is what God knows, and that's what God is working with. He's trying to get you to click this way and click that way so that you can become what he wants you to be. Somebody said amen. amen. Okay, so the righteous shall flourish like the, like the palm tree. Okay, uh, uh, and those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God, and they shall bring forth fruit in old age. Okay, so what does that mean? What does that mean? I mean, it, it means bringing forth means break forth. It means it, it means like a bud. You break forth like a bud. A bud is just a really uh, 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 hard little, not even a flower yet. It's one of these little round things. All right, but but when it it's a bud, but it, all of a sudden it breaks out, and it's a beautiful flower. Amen. And, and so, if, if it's a rosebud, it's going to become a beautiful rose. And, it's, and if it's a carnation or, or any other kind of, kind of uh, flower, well, that's what it's going to be. But you cannot, it cannot a rosebud cannot be a, car, a carnation. And vice versa. Amen. It's just going to be what it was made to become. Amen. And so... So it, what does it mean? It means, it means to be fruitful, okay? It means to, to, to spread and fly and spring up, okay? When it's, when it's talking about flourishing, it's talking about being fruitful. It's talking about creating. It's talking about exposing you, yourself, your godly self to the world because we're not supposed to be hidden, amen? A light should be seen on a hill. Amen. We are to be, we are to be epistles known and read of all men. Everyone is supposed to know who you are, what you are. You're a child of God. Amen. When they see you out on the job, that's a child of God right there. That person goes to church, don't mess with them or her or whatever. 
Amen. And, and, and uh, everyone ought to know you are to expose yourself to the world. But it gets deeper than that. Amen. And this is a process, all right? Uh, because you are to have dominion. Some, tell somebody, I have dominion. You are supposed to have dominion. Dominion. You are, and what does dominion mean? Your dominion means that you are, to, you are to have supreme authority. Okay, I'm not saying you're lord and king over everybody and everything. You, are, you don't have supreme authority over man. Okay, God gave us supreme authority over the things of the world and, and, and of the earth. All right, but not over man. He left man out of the equation because every man has, its own, has his own mind and they got to make up their own decision. Following what I'm saying? Okay, so and you got to follow the, the, your decision and become what God wants you to become what God wants you to be. And when you're in the process, okay, you, you, you get in a process of, of wanting what God wants you to be. Amen. God knows you from, again, from the beginning and all the way to the end, right? He knows everything about you. And he knows what he wants you to become. And so it's, let's say, let's say that this is your journey from there to over there. But you didn't really repent or get into your journey until you got here. Well, so now you missed up, you missed part of your journey that will help you to grow to become where he wants you to go. So if it's not too late in your season of time and in your life, God knows how to re replace and repair and to make up what the canker worm has eaten and what the caterpillar has taken away. Are you understanding what I'm saying? But you can't wait too long because your lifespan is only so long. Someday you're going to die. We're all going there. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's an appointment you can't miss. Amen. And so if God has a plan for you, somewhere you need to, you need to get, on, get on in line with what God wants so that, so that you can fulfill the plan that God has for you. Because if you wait to the very end, and you, 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 let's say you're going to live to be 90 years old and you decide to really surrender to God in the last year of your life. Guess what? You're not going to do everything that God had for you throughout your life. You, you missed it. You missed your season. Just like you can't go back and be a teenager. Can't act, you can't go around acting like a teenager right now and you're 40, 50 years old. I mean, there's a lot of people trying to do that, you know. <laughs> Amen. But you can't do that. All right? It, it, just, it just doesn't work. You, you missed that portion of your life. So now you got to go on. And you got to get into the slot of where you are and do the best that you can, can do the best that you can there in order to fulfill your purpose. Okay, let's get into this process, okay? So, you, so, so uh, in the process, God knows you from the beginning to the end, right? Okay, so he already knows what he has for you. And everyone said amen. amen. He al he's already thought of it. He already has a plan for it. He already, he already, he already has it all designed. Okay, so what does he do with it? Okay, so God has a design for you. So what does he do with this design that he has for you, Brother Frankie? I mean, what he does is that when you get in your right mind, in your right heart, where you're able to listen to God, he inspires you. Man, somebody ought to run the aisles on that one. I said he inspires you on what he wants you to do. God told me when I was 12 years old that I was going to be a pastor. I didn't even have the Holy Ghost, neither was I baptized in Jesus' name. But I was at an altar, and I was seeking the face of God, and I was asking him for the Holy Ghost, and he tells me, I'm going to make you a pastor. I was 12 years old. I didn't know what to do with that. I wish I would have had somebody to tell me what to do with it. 
So I, so I made a deal with God. I said, God, okay, fill me with the Holy Ghost first, and then I'll, I'll do what you want me to do. My answer should have been, whatever you want, God, I'll do it. And so God knew what he wanted me to become. I knew what he wanted me to become. And the devil knew what he wanted me to become. Okay? So at 12 years old, that's when I really got attacked by the enemy and ended up taking the wrong road. All right? And didn't, and didn't come back to church until I was 25 years old. So I missed like 12 and a half years of my life. Okay? In the world. And so when I got in church, I, 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 here I am. It, it was 25 years old. Got the Holy Ghost. Got baptized in Jesus' name and started living for God. Amen. But I missed all of that, that, that teenage years, that, the, the, the adolescent years, the, the, the youth years, the, the young adult years. I missed all that in the church. I would probably be further along in my ministry if I had stayed in church when I was 12 years old. Okay? But I'm not going to cry over spilt milk. Amen. So when I got in church, I ran as fast as I can run because I know that I needed to do some catch up. Because there were things that I didn't know. There were things that I knew I should have known. There were things that, that, that I should have matured at and that I knew that I had not matured at. There, there were a lot of empty uh, uh, places and blotches in my life, amen, that I knew I should have had uh, knowledge of, but I didn't have because I was out being a, a, a dummy out in the world. I, I understand what I'm talking about. Amen. So when I got in church, this, I said all that to say this, that when I finally got in church at age 25, amen, amen, the Lord the, and got baptized, got filled with the Holy Ghost, uh, then the Lord brought that 12-year-old experience uh, back to me, and, 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 uh, uh, and he told me, I, I want you to be a pastor. I, then I remembered it. Like it was yesterday. I could still take you to the same church. That church is still there. I could take you to that church. I could take you right to the place at the altar where God spoke to me at that age. You know how long that's been? That, that has been 55 years. Ago. Do the math, okay? So, but what I'm trying to say is that I got when I got in and began to listen to God and hear God, that's what I began to get as much as I can get and eat as much as I can eat and, and get close to my pastor as much as I could. I would make up reasons just to have a meeting with them. <laughs> oh, uh, Pastor, I, um, can we have a meeting this week? He goes, oh, yeah, okay, what about? Um, you know, I just wanted to talk to you about, about, about the, the youth, because you know, he put me in charge of the youth. Sunday school. You know, I, just, I wouldn't make up stuff. And so there was always something to talk about, but, you know, regarding that, I, I wasn't really lying. But, but what I really wanted to do was to glean from him. I wanted his wisdom. I wanted his understanding. I wanted to know more on what to do and what not to do and how to be and how not to be. Because I knew I was, I was running to make up for lost time. And I knew that he was the only one that could teach me what I have, what and how to get a hold of what I needed in my life. Okay? Why? Because I knew that I only had so much life left. And I needed to fulfill what God had for me in my life. I wasn't going to wait until I was old to fulfill it. I wasn't going to waste time just being in church and going to church without having a purpose in church.
Okay, so what do you do? When, when finally, when God, when I got in church and I began to listen and follow God and want to hear from God, then he inspires me. Okay, he inspires me. And so wh- wh- what do I do? I receive it. Okay, God, I receive this, this thought, this, this understanding, this purpose that you put within me. And I know it's not going to happen tomorrow, but Lord, I, I receive it. Okay, so, so what, what do I do with it? I have, to, I have to receive it and incubate it like Mary when the Spirit told her she was going to be, she was going to have a baby. She had to receive it and she had to incubate it. She had to get it within her. She had to put it in her. Okay. I got this. All right? Then she had to allow herself to get pregnant with it. What do you mean, Pastor? That means that thought, that inspiration that God gave you, amen, you have to, you have to allow it to grow within you. What is it that he wants me to do? How do I do this? Lord, I need you to lead me and guide me and give me wisdom and understanding and what to do and what not to do. Amen. That's how you, that's how you become pregnant with it. You read about it. You pray about it. You, you fast about it. You talk about it. Now, don't talk about it to everybody, okay, because there's dream killers, all right? And some of your brothers and sisters will be just like Joseph's brothers and they'll want to kill you. All right? All right? So don't talk to everybody, but talk to somebody. Amen. That, that, that will help you with your dream and encourage you for your dream. Are you he- hearing what I'm talking about? It's like starting a business. And, and, and this, this goes along with how the, the things that God downloads into you. God will download you, into you how to start a business. And unless you receive it, he inspires you. I'm telling you, and, and I'm taking this into another route. I understand what I'm talking about. Because after you incubate it, you get pregnant with it. Guess what? You know, after the, after the pregnancy stage, what happens then? You give birth. You, you got to bring it forth. It's going to come out. And, and, and you know when it comes out, sister? Everybody's going to see it. Everybody sees it. And, 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 and there's nobody that can take it away. See, they try to kill Joseph with his dream. But when you got the anointing of God upon you over a purpose and over a reason and over a plan, amen, there's nobody that can kill you. There's nobody that can wipe it from you. There's nobody. The only one that can do that is you. Or are you hearing what I'm talking about? But if you hold on to it, you got that you got that thing incubating within you. It's in your heart. It's in your mind. It's in your soul. It's in your spirit. There ain't no devil in hell that can stop it. Hallelujah. From the White House to the outhouse, there ain't nothing that can stop it. Because God has his hand on you. And when you're in the plan of God, there ain't nobody, ain't no devil in hell that can detour that plan. Woo! Clap your hands to the Lord. Give him some praise. Now, now, now speaking in that light, okay, now there's a lot of saints that say, okay, there's so many people, kinds of people, there's three kinds of people in the world, there's, you know, there's five kinds of people in the world, there's four, you know, in this light, I'm going to say there's two kinds of people in the world, okay, speaking about this particular subject in this light, okay, there's one that produce, okay, and then the other ones are just consumers. There's producers and consumers. You following me? 
There's people that, that, that are shakers and movers and they're producers and they get things going and they help things, they, they help things to go and so forth. And then other people just come around just to, you know, just to ride, just to ride. All right. Those are the consumers. I want to be on the producer end. All right. Okay. Are you hearing me? All right, so, 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 <laughs> you need to be a producer, not a consumer, okay, all right, check, check out these big industries that I'm going to just mention, okay, Apple, uh, Samsung, Amazon, Tesla, I mean, just to name a few, but these are billion dollar companies, Okay, and, and there's many more on top of that. But they're billion-dollar companies, but they all got something in common. All right? Why are they billion-dollar companies? Question. Anybody with the answer? Come on, speak it out. Who said that? No, who said producers? Come here. Because they're producers. Welcome. Amen. They're producers. All right? Yeah. They got a lot of, because they know that they have a lot of consumers, but, but what do they do with their production? They keep tweaking it, changing it here, changing it there. iPhone 1, iPhone 2, iPhone 3, iPhone. I mean, how many we got now? Jeez. They keep tweaking it, and it's not really much better. They, they put a little tweak here. And the same thing with all the other phone companies, right? right. Amen. So, and, and the same thing with cars and, 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 and uh, Amazon. Anyway, got a new Amazon now. You know, do this, do that. You know, I mean, it's... But, but what are, they're billion-dollar companies. Why? Because, because they, they're producers, and they keep producing the same product but with a little tweak here and there. I'm going somewhere with this. I'm giving you some wisdom here. Amen. Because you are producers. Every single one of you. Every single one of you is a producer. Amen. I mean, if you got a company, you are, you are on the fast lane, amen, to becoming a billion-dollar one. Are you hearing what I'm talking about? Amen. If you allow the Lord to take you there, amen, to give you that idea, amen, to tweak it here and tweak it there, amen, don't do it your way. God has a plan. Remember, well, amen, his plan is already blessed. His plan is... Are you hearing what I'm talking about? His plan is already anointed, amen. And the third thing... His plan is already destined for what? Success. Success. So get your hand out of it. Amen. Amen. It, that, that's God's company. That's God's business. Let him take it to a billion dollar business. Let him grow it, oh hallelujah, until what he wants it to become so that he can get the glory, not you, uh, amen, so that he can get all of the glory. Oh, come on, somebody, amen, and, and there's some people already, amen, you're saying, well, not me, I, I've never produced nothing, you know, I, you know, I, I, I don't think I could do that, and, and, and uh, well, just keep talking like that, and your mouth will keep you in trouble. Amen. Your mouth will keep you down in the gutter. Your mouth will keep you in, on, on the poor side of town. Your mouth will keep you, amen, driving that hoopty that always breaks down every other week. Are you hearing what I'm talking about? But that's not God's will for you. I'm, I'm not saying, you know, you know I'm, not, and I'm not speaking, you know, uh, uh, one of those, uh, uh, you know, get rich messages. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about dominion and producing fruit. 
producing fruit as a child of God. Amen. Who said that God's children ought to be poor and dilapidated and driving little hoopties all over town? Come on. Where do you read that in the Bible? I read, amen, the, amen, the blessing of the Lord make it rich and it added no sorrow to it. Ask and you shall receive. Come on, somebody. Amen. You, you've been listening to the wrong people. Amen. I understand what I'm talking about. See, if you're going to walk with God, you need to talk with God. Amen. If you're going to talk with him, you need to talk like him. Amen. You need to, you need to have, you need to allow him, amen, to say and you just believe and do what he says to do. Are you hearing what I'm talking about? Amen. Not, not what this world tells you that you are. You need to be what God tells you you are. Amen. I'm not what the world says I am. Amen. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. I'm going to be what God says I am. I'm not what the media says I am. I'm what he says I am. Amen. I'm a child of God. I'm a prince of a king. Amen. My father's a king. He's a king of kings and the Lord of lords. Oh, hallelujah. Are you hearing what I'm talking about? Amen. Amen. I'm not going to be what or you shouldn't be what your friends tell you that you are. Or your so-called friends, because if your so-called friends tell you, hey, you're never going to be this, you're this, you're that, da, da, da. I mean, they, they're not your friend. They're, they're, they got, they got the, the crab disease. Amen. They always try to pull you down to the bottom because they're, that's where they're at. Amen. And they don't, want you, they don't want you to get ahead. Amen. Because then it will make them look bad. Come on, you need to start hanging out with different people. People that are going to lift you up. People that are going to help you. People that are going to give you advice. People that are going to say, you can do it. Amen. You can, you, can, you can have a great business. Amen. Everybody ought to be here. Everybody here ought to be a business owner. That's the only way you're going to get into the, to the millions and the billions. Are you hearing what I'm talking about? Hallelujah. Amen. Somebody said yes. Amen. Let God download a great idea into your mind and into your spirit. Amen. And, and incubate that thing. Receive that thing. And let and, and then give birth to it in the name of Jesus. Uh, hallelujah. Amen. God says, I made you in my image. That's what God said, right? He made us in his image. And if and if and if if he is Elohim. The divine, the mighty God, the ruler, the creator, and we are his children, then you ought to have creative genes within you. Hello? So where do where do where do we get that I'll never be when my father is a creator? My God, I got those genes. Hello? Hello? Hey man. Say man, somebody. Come on, that means I believe it. I mean, that means I receive that. Hallelujah. Man, we ought to have creative stuff within us. I can go over there and do that. Hallelujah. We came to L.A. We didn't know where we were going to start a church. We just knew God's sending us here. Amen. I mean, we let the Lord pick the place. We thought it was somewhere else here in L.A., and it, it wasn't it. Then we didn't feel it. But when we were coming down the 605, we let God, you need to show us. And all of a sudden, boom. You know, we got here to Whittier. We, I felt this is the place where God wants us to start a church. And lo and behold, amen, this was the place. And, 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 and I am not deferring from that. Hallelujah. Amen. So now, so now God says, I want you to widen the stakes and I want you to go start other churches. Hallelujah. Amen. I said, okay. Well, I can't. Amen. So I, I can't, I can't do it. Amen. Amen. If I got all the responsibility of the pastor, so then I gotta, I gotta defer this so I can do that. Praise 
Are you understanding what I'm talking about? What are you doing, Pastor? I'm just fulfilling my purpose. Uh, amen. I'm st- I'm not dead yet. Praise God. Amen. And I still have a. I still got some life in me. So I know what I'm going to do with it. Amen. I'm not. Uh, I'm not going to just you know you know dance off into the sunset. Amen. Because men of God never retire. Hallelujah. Amen. We work for God till the end, till Jesus comes. I gotta keep. I gotta keep my 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 uh, oil lamp full of oil. Amen. I gotta keep reaching out and winning souls, sister. I gotta keep ministering. I gotta keep teaching messages like this that help the church to step up into another level of faith so that they too can fulfill God's purpose in their lives. I mean, I'm teaching you stuff that, I, that, that I, I've just learned. And I'm giving it to you now. Amen. So now you're going to be responsible for knowing this knowledge and it's up to you what you do with it. Are you hearing what I'm talking about? Yes. Hallelujah. So, so God says, I made you in my image. Amen. And, 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 uh, and so he has, we ought to have those creative genes and power inside of us. So when you, wh- wherever you work and whatever you do, I mean, you ought to be, you ought to have creative ideas in those places. Boy, I got real quiet. Did you hear what I said? At your workplace, whether you are, whether you're just an employee or the employer, you ought to have creative ideas for that company. Amen. And then so that you can begin to exercise that. They'll recognize that. Amen. And they'll begin to pull you up the ladder. Praise God. Mm, okay, I guess not. You could stay in the bottom of the totem pole if you want. Amen, but, but that's not how I feel. Amen, God's people ought to shine in whatever you do, wherever you are. Amen, you ought to have creative power. Let God download some stuff into your mind and into your spirit and say, I can do this. I can, well, what about if we do this, boss? What about if we do it like this? What about if this, you know, we just kind of implement this idea or implement that? You know what that employer is going to do? He's going to go, that's a great idea. And he's going to go home and chew on it, and he's going to incubate it. Hello? He's going to get pregnant with it, and he's going to come back to you, hey, why don't we? And he's going to, and he's going to say, you know what? This, this guy is management material, or this person. Are, are you understand what I'm saying? Amen. But you just, you know, you're not trying to build somebody else's company. God will help you build your own. God will help you build your own. Are you hearing what I'm talking about? Somebody said, praise the Lord. Amen. You have creative genes, and, 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 and we ought to have those creative ideas already running through our mind. And some of you have already been doing it, but you don't realize what's been happening to you. You've already been, you know, having creative thoughts and minds and so forth. And, and, and uh, it's, it's kind of like Sister Maylene, you know, she, 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 she's concocting her own products. Hallelujah. Amen. You think she did that all by herself? Nope. God's downloading some stuff into her. Hallelujah. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. Somebody said, praise the Lord. Oh, man. It's kind of like, I've made a lot of stuff for myself. I I, I should have patented a lot of stuff that I did. I just did it and used it and, and tossed it, and then then did something else. You know, just like the the, the cream that I use on my face and my hair, it's like, I've been using that for 
I don't know, 15, 20 years already. And tweaking it here and tweaking it there. Hallelujah. But, but um, for me, it works. You know? But what I'm saying is that these are downloads that God gives you to create stuff. Because that's in your genes. Your father is that way. He's a creator. Amen. And we got to get our faith to the point to where we believe this word. Let them have dominion. Let them have dominion. Let them have supreme power. Let them have creative power within them. Amen. To, uh, to, to, so, that, so, so that they control everything on the earth. Are you, you hearing what I'm saying? How do they make gold the way they do? And how do they form this out of wood? And the benches that you're sitting on and the fabric that you're sitting on. Somebody did it and made a lot of money from it. What can you do if you allow God to download something into your mind on how to use something with it? Whether, whether it, it, it be out of the beast of the, uh, of the field or the plants and the trees in the, in, in, in the forest or the ore that it's in the mountains or the fish that are in the sea. What idea can God give you out of, out of, out of all of that? In our technology today, my God, the, the possibilities are endless. Toyota came out with an electric car, I don't know, 10 years ago. We really didn't do anything with it. They didn't tweak it every year and make it better. They just, uh, that, that, what, was a, what was it called? The Prius. Just kept it the same thing every year. No, 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 no. You know. But there was a guy in the background. Yeah. Tesla. Wow. Tesla rocket, you know, right? Yeah, Tesla house, you know, just everything, you know, just has a Tesla battery. Now we just, his name carries it. Tesla phone, yeah, just billions, okay? I'm, I'm trying to get your mind to expand. Okay, let's get back to some word, all right? In Joshua chapter 1, verse 2, the Bible says this, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore arise and go over this Jordan, thou and all these people, unto the land which I give to thee, even to the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your feet shall tread upon, that have I given unto you. And as I said unto Moses, from the wilderness and this Lebanon, even unto the great river, the river Euphrates, and all the land of the Hittites, and unto the great sea toward the going down of the sun, shall be your coast. It's all going to be yours, Joshua. You and all the the children of Israel. Just stop right there. Take five off. Okay, leave it there. Leave it there. Huh. 
You see, this is what God did. God can do anything, but this is what he did. Okay, just looking at history. He, the children of Israel were crying, send us to deliver, send us to deliver, get us out of this bondage. In 400 years, they had been in bondage and by Pharaoh, by the crack of the whip, making bricks and motar and, 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 and uh, pyramids or whatever they did with all that brick. And, and, and uh, so God sends them Moses. Moses goes, okay, you know, uh, and, and, and he brings them out of, the, out of Egypt land across the Red Sea and into the desert. And while they were in the desert, they begin to complain. All right? They begin to complain about the water. They begin to complain about no meat. They begin to complain that we can't go in there and, 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 and take, take the land because those people are too big for us. We're like grasshoppers in their eyes, and there's no way that we're going to be able to go in there and take the land. So here they were after God had done everything that, that uh, in their mind and in their imagination that no way they could have done on their own. No way could they have made the ten plagues. No way could they have killed every firstborn in Egypt land. No way could they, could they have turned the water to blood and, and caused the flies and, 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 and the fleas and the frogs and all the, all the plagues that hit, it, uh, hit Egypt land and, and then part the Red Sea on top of that and then kill all of Pharaoh's army while right in front of their eyes. And God told them, from this day forward, no more are, you, are, are, are they, are they going to be bothering you, okay? And so, I mean, they, God did all that right in their eyes. And then he takes them across into the desert land. And, and on their way to the promised land, they get at the border, amen, of, of, of Cadiz Barnea, which is right at the border of, of, of the Jordan River. And they send the ten spies. The ten spies come back, and nine of them said, no, we can't do it. And, and, or eight of them come, come back and say, no, we can't. Or, I'm sorry. Ten of them come back and say, no, we can't do it. Two of them say that, yes, we can. Okay? And, and, and so uh, the Lord gets upset because they're not believing him. They're not believing the rhema word of God. Okay? What is the rhema word of God? The spoken word of God or the written word. Okay? So this is what happens. And then believe it. Remember, God knows <coughs> from the beginning, He knows the ending. And He knows what He wants to do with the children of Israel. And, he's, and his plan is still anointed. His plan is still, is, is still destined for success. And his plan is still blessed. Okay? But if you don't want to be a part of my plan, then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you die in the desert land, and I'm going to take your kids into the promised land. Thank you. Amen, because that's what he did. All right? Because of their unbelief. Because of, and that's what the scripture says, because of your unbelief. All right? Don't let that be said of you. And this is what I'm trying to get us to believe. Let them have dominion. You can become something far greater than what you think you can be. God has a great plan for you. Amen. But you got to get in line with him, with this. Amen. And say, not my will, but thine be done. Amen. And this is what we got to do. And so, and, and, and so this is, and now, so now Joshua, fast forward, all, all, all those that are 20 years and above die in the desert land. Joshua now is about to cross the, uh, the, the, uh, the Jordan River. And then the Lord begins to speak. And, and uh, the Lord begins, and, and, and the Lord tells Joshua, hey, Moses is dead. Moses d is dead, Joshua. Okay. 
But he told Joshua, you got a new generation backing you up. So everywhere the sole of your feet treads upon, that I have given to you. Amen. And then verse number 5 says what? There shall not be any man be able to stand before you, thee all, how long? All the days of your life. All the days of your life. Amen. I don't know if you were here or you, you might even, you may, you may not even remember, but I remember it. Amen. Brother Winslow came and he looks at First Lady. He says, nobody is going to be able to tell you no. Except me. Because I'm her husband. Hallelujah. Amen. But most of the time she gets her way. But you know why? It's not because, because I'm a jelly back. It's because when she says something, something, I analyze it because I know the word of the Lord that has been spoken to her and about her. And so I'm very careful that if I go against her, and if I feel that that's the will of God, whatever she is saying or deciding, then I would be fight, not fighting her, I'm fighting God. That's where a lot of us get messed up. Because we might be talking with somebody or even talking with me as the pastor or one of the other men of God in this place. Amen. But you already got a thought and an idea in your mind. Amen. And you want to fulfill that. And, 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 and the man of God tells you, no, you shouldn't do that. And then you go against that. You might just, you may not, yes, but inside you're going, not going to do it. You're not fighting against me. You're fighting against him. And that's where a lot of us get messed up. And that's why it's, marriages get messed up. And that's why not all of them. I'm just saying that's part of the reason. It's because you're not obeying. And you're not following. And you're not being obedient. Amen. And, and hello, okay, it's, that's not fair. Who said it was? We are in a democracy. We are not, I mean, we are, yes, we live in a democracy, but we, but we are governed by a theocracy. What does that mean? That means I don't live under a president. I live and submit myself to a king. The King of kings and the Lord of lords. Hallelujah. Amen. And when he decrees something, yes, sir. When he says something, yes, sir. Amen. That, like that prophecy, yes, sir. Are you understand what I'm talking about, where I'm coming from? Amen. So when, you know, a lot of us, we get prophecies and we just kind of cast them aside. My God, you're throwing away gold. If you would just obey the prophecies that you received, you would be so much further along. Boy, it's, got, it's quiet. I, and, and, and that lets me know that you're eating. That's good. It's good to eat in church. Not food, but God's word. Okay? All right? And, and, and so... I am trying to, you must understand that I'm trying to help you become what God wants you to be. Okay? And I'm trying to help you be prosperous. All right? But not for your gain. It's for His gain. Are you understanding what I'm saying? It's for Him. It's for His kingdom. It's not your kingdom. It's His kingdom. Amen. You, I mean, even in your own family, those are, those are your kids biologically or stepkids or however you want to call it okay but that's your family 
all right, and you're in charge of that, and, and m- moms and dads, you, 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 have, you, you have responsibility over that, but ultimately, those children belong to God. You don't abuse them. Amen, because if you do, then you got to face him. That's why we don't abuse our spouses. Because they're, their children have got to. Hello? Because if not, then we got to face him. All right. Okay, I'm going to finish up here. Verse number three says, Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given to you. You know what that is? That's real estate. Amen. That's real estate. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. I believe it. I believe that with all my heart. Amen. And, and I've stood on places and I've claimed them and guess what? God's given them. Are you hearing what I'm talking about? Amen. We are here because God gave this to us. Mm. You got to speak it. Come on. You got to speak it. Believe it. You got to speak it and believe it. I believe it. I'm speaking it. Amen. And it's mine. Somebody said amen. 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 So, so you know, S- Sister Alma, I rejoice with you and I bind together with you over the dream that God gave you the other day in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And I give God all the praise, all the glory. Amen. Amen. How, how, how does this work? Okay. I'm going to come. Let's stand. I'm going to conclude with this. Okay. Remember, wh- what was this message called? Dominion faith, but what was the subtitle? Bring forth fruit. If you're going to have dominion faith, you're going to bring forth the fruit of it. Okay? I got dominion faith. Well, where is it? All right? You hear what I'm talking about? Do you think I'm passing out $50 bills because I'm rich? Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> Not yet. See? Why? Because I believe it. I believe it. I believe it. So what is faith? Faith is a substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. What do I don't see? Okay. I am hoping for the blessings of the Lord. And my evidence, my evidence is saying, come here, Mia. Yes. That's my evidence. This is my evidence. Okay. Church call. Church. So, what am I doing? I'm planting seed in what I believe. I'm planting seed in what I believe. I I don't see a whole lot of seed in seeing one, two pieces of seed. Amen. See, and that's what I'm telling you. You got to believe this. You got to believe this. Amen. You got to believe it. Amen. To where you got evidence. 
Okay. Oh, I got dominion faith. Where's your evidence? Okay. Where's your evidence? Bless him, Lord. God, multiply in the name of Jesus. God, multiply. God, to him, to his children. God and his children's children. His wife, father, his work. Thank you for healing him, delivering him, God, in the name of Jesus, Father. Bless his business, God. Bless him in the name of Jesus. Let it be multiplied. But amen. By the time the year is over, God, amen. His business is going to make three times into what it did last year. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Bless her, Father, in Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Now, I believe this with all of my heart. It's not about the money. It's about the seed. Amen. It's about the seed. Bless them, God. Bless them, God. In the name of you. Come on, let's pray. God, in the name of Jesus, Father, bless, Father, every seed giver, God, that is here tonight, God, because it's a demonstration of what they believe. It's a demonstration and an evidence, God, of what they are hoping for. God, in the name of Jesus, Father. I see growth, Peter. I see growth. Like trees growing. Amen. The green all up on top. Amen. But it doesn't mean they're trees so that you can cut down. It's, it's they're trees that you have planted in your faith and in your ministry and in your family and in your business. It shall be like a tree planted near the rivers of water. And you shall bear fruit in his season. Bear fruit. Bear fruit. Bear fruit. Fruit. Let me, let me just establish this now. People, you're planning to have a business Listen to me. If you are planning to have a business, don't treat God like Uncle Sam with your business. What, what do you mean, Pastor? You know, you count all your deductions and all this and that and that and this and, and then and then you, you tell Uncle Sam, this is only what I made, and that's what you pay taxes on. God is not Uncle Sam. I didn't pay myself a check and then pay tithes on that check. That's Uncle Sam style. In my own business... My wife and I ran our own business. From the very beginning, we did not pay ourselves and then pay tithes on that. That's, um, that's what we do with Uncle Sam. God's not Uncle Sam. He sees everything. He's the one that gave us the business. So what we did, after the expenses that the business made, that's what we paid tithes on. Hello? When the Jews went to go give their tithes and offering to the Lord, they didn't, they didn't have an Uncle Sam. Out of every ten sheep, they took one. Are you understand what I'm saying? We're not in a democracy, we are in a theocracy. I'm saying this so that you can be blessed. Those of you, if you start it right, it will grow right. It will grow right. Are you understand what I'm saying? And to God be all the honor and the glory. You will see, he knows how to open up the doors and pour out the, the blessings in the window. <laughs> Wherever you tread upon, it's going to be yours. And nobody, nobody is going to be able to tell you no. No one's going to be able to tell. 
Ain't that what the scripture said? Amen. There shall be not any man to be able to stand before you all the days of your life. That's powerful. You know, you know it doesn't mean, it doesn't mean someone's going to hear say, no, you can't go. It doesn't mean that. Stand before you. It means he's not going to be able to argue with you. Not going to be able to tell you no. Not going to be able to dispute you. Not going to be able to win against you. Are you hearing what I'm talking about? You're just, God's just going to make a way. That's what that means. Bro, <laughs> you haven't seen the beginning yet. I see a crew and a fleet of trucks. We just need to align ourselves with God. We're in a theocracy. God knows how to bless his people. I'm not going to I'm not going to listen to what the media says. <laughs> We're going through a recession. Hold everything you got. We went through a pandemic. You didn't get skinnier. <laughs> Amen. And you didn't have to leave your house. And you didn't have to turn in your cars. God paid all the bills. God paid all the bills. Some of you even moved into new places during the pandemic. <laughs> Praise God. Bought new vehicles. Expanded your businesses. Got new jobs. Ate more food. <laughs> Say amen, sister. Amen. Amen. <laughs> amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. So that's how we, we release our faith. He inspires us, we receive it, incubate it, get pregnant with it. Let it get stirred up in our spirit and our mind. Amen. And then when it comes out, when we give birth to it, when it, when we produce, everyone's going to see. Praise God. Amen. Everyone's going to see the blessing. Everyone's going to see how God blessed you. Everyone's going to be able to see how you've been blessed. Are uh, you understand what I'm talking about? Amen. And during that time, you just sow seed. I believe it, God. I believe it, God. I believe it. I believe it. And watch him. Watch God and see if he will not open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you are unable to contain. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Do you sometimes think at night... How, how can I get more write-offs? Right? Huh? I'm talking to you. Yeah, yeah. I know you do. I know you do. Because you're in the overflow lane. Okay? And you're, when you're in the overflow lane, it's like, I don't want this to all spill to God. I mean, to people or to Uncle Sam. I got to figure out a way to write this off. <laughs> right? Because that's overflow. You want to go there? You want to go there? Give to God what belongs to God. Give to God what belongs to God. And watch. See if he will not open up the windows of heaven.
pour you out a blessing that you are unable to contain. Let's clap our hands to the Lord. Let's come and pray. Say, God, I'm willing. I want to, I'm willing to get in line. I'm willing to do what you want me to do. God, I want Father to be productive. I want to, I want to bring forth fruit, God. I want to have that dominion faith by the power that's in the name of Jesus, Lord. Just be.